Welcome to the Rustic Garden. It's the end of May and I thought I'd give you a quick tour of my raised beds. I'm going to start right up here at the top. This is a trench I dug and that is asparagus coming up. These are new crowns that I planted. This is what an asparagus crown looks like and basically what you do is you dig it down about six inches. It's filled up a little bit with the rain. Plant the crowns about two inches deep and when you get about that tall you just backfill in the uh, trench and that's how you establish asparagus plants. Here's my seed onions. Here are a bunch of greens that I grew. All of these greens were seeds that I started in seed cells. And you can see red lettuce, spinach, endive, arugula, mustard greens back there. I have a strawberry container in the back that's just starting to bloom. Here's one tomato bed with eight tomatoes in there and I mulched the bed to create a disease splash barrier and did a video on that. These have also been pruned in different or in different stages of pruning just depending on the size of the tomato plant and also depending on what type of tomato plant it is. Here's my sunken container garden. I've got cucumbers in there, tomatoes, peppers, a bushed um, tomato plant. That's a Baxter bush right in there. Some rosemary, lavender, peppers, lettuce. That's cauliflower and broccoli that's not going to make it. It's gotten too hot so that's all going to turn to seed. More tomatoes in there. This is what's left of my transplants. I've sold most of them at my um, flea market that I do and gave a lot of them away. Over on this side are my perennial flowers. These are all flowers that I started over the years indoors and they come back year after year and this is a great way to really bring bees and beneficial insects into your garden. Peppers, eggplants, they're struggling a little bit. Here's my asparagus bed that I've let go. After you harvest it for a while, you want a lot of stalks to come up. And this is what asparagus stalks actually look like through the growing season. They get tall, they're fern-like, very fine leaves. And this, and the reason that you let them go is you want them to replenish the root system. So come next year, you'll have even more spears coming out of the ground. Here's another tomato bed. That is Batavian endive and another endive in there. And you can really sort of pack the greens in around your lettuces, I mean the greens, the lettuces around your tomatoes because you'll harvest those before the tomatoes really get big. Some of the onions that I started in here are beets, kohlrabi, more onions, some tomatoes, and I started all these in seed cells indoors. So you can definitely start beets in seed cells. A lot of people say don't do it, they won't transplant well. They don't like to have their roots disturbed and if you're just careful you can do it. And I can actually see some of the beets starting to form down at the bottom there. A couple more tomato plants. I think I have about 42 varieties of tomatoes in this year. More beets. That's a potato container. Over here is my Swiss chard. That's Brussels sprouts. Those are the potatoes that are growing in a mound in the raised bed and also more potatoes in containers. That's Radachio right up front in there. Peas, lettuces, some more strawberries, a couple more tomatoes. Been eating the radishes and here's finally some more peas. And I'm going to skip the tour of the garden back there but you can see the other part and that's my deck. I finally did take down the greenhouse uh, tent. But this is where my garden is as of I think it's uh, May 28th. Well, let me just show you real quick and there's my purple cabbage that's doing really well and that was planted in seed cells. So just about everything I showed you I started in seed cells. Not a whole lot directly went into the ground except for maybe um, the radishes. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.